Oh, D, let me ask you this, because I've been critical of Kyle and I also gave him his flowers for play design. But when I watch other football teams at the line of scrimmage, I just feel like the concepts are not what the Niners are doing in Kyle's offense. In layman terms, can you break down to us what Kyle's trying to do and what this Niner offense is to you? Well, there's a lot of spacing, you know, in his offense. I mean, you don't really see a lot of, like, bunch formations. I mean, every once in a while against man coverage. You know, the typical man beaters. I mean, you see motion every single play. I mean, Kittle will tell you. I mean, he gets tired of running from one side of the field, one side of the formation to the other side, like every single play. But, you know, they're a big five-receiver-out team. All right? That's not uncommon in West Coast kind of system. But they're big on spacing. And so that Christian McCaffrey coming out of the backfield, you know, on these various option routes and flooding one side of the field. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's just very intricate. Last night they ran a play. To Jonas Jennings, uh, Juwan Jennings, like three or four times. They hit it all four times. And so sometimes you just stay with the play that works. And then there's a lot of stuff that at the line of scrimmage, whether it's a run pass uh, option, and it's up to the quarterback to decide, depending on how the defense is guarding him, depending on what personnel they have on the field, which play to run. But I, I think that it's, uh, I think it's a very good offense. We're not seeing as much hardcore play action as we have seen in the past, where you really take these deep shots. And, and typically you do that with speedo routes, two receivers going down the field in some combination or another. We're not seeing as much of that. But I think it's because, you know, they've got really good players that they count on that can really get in space and, and win matchups right now. And that's kind of what they've been doing the last three weeks. Brian Baldinger joining us on 95.7 The Game. Um, Baldy, can you help me explain... Uh, or or explain to me when when the 49ers acquire Christian McCaffrey in the off se- in the middle of the season maybe their offense doesn't change but the fact of the matter is he comes in in the middle of the season and he's their primary toucher of the ball he's he's getting 30 touches a game what kind of a an adjustment is that for everybody else i almost feel like it's a, a, a basketball team acquiring a 30-point score in the, in the middle of the year, is it a tough adjustment or not? I don't think so. You know, I mean, they're always going to uh, sign and be fueled by the run game, you know, and he got most of the carries last night. I know Mason, you know, got, you know, four or five at the end. He got the big run. Um, but, you know, he's always been a volume toucher of the football. I mean, he was at Stanford. He was his first three years in Carolina. Now, the injuries – you know, started to out, add up and mount, and I think it's something you got to monitor here. But, you know, he's always been a great dual-threat player. And, it, you know, when you throw it to him, they're pretty simple passes. He's just electric in space and just knowing where everybody is and being able to slither for a first down. Um, you know, he gets you the tough yards down the one-yard line the touchdown run last week or last night. Um, and so, you, you know, the, the majority of the run game now, look, if Elijah Mitchell was healthy – you know, they might be splitting a few more carries than what we saw right now. But, you know, the fact is is that he's, he's their best weapon right now that you can put the hands into. And so typically you say give your best weapon, you know, the number of touches so that he can break the runs that we have seen. Uh, we saw a 23-yarder last night. We saw a 30-yarder against Miami. We saw a big, you know, touchdown last week, you know, against uh, the Bucks in the passing game. I mean, he's got big playability. The more touches he gets – the more frequently that's going to happen. Baldy, I live my life on a roller coaster. I'm not ashamed of it. I come in one week, I tell Stani they can win it. You know, they can't win it. Yeah. But are yeah. you shocked, Baldy, when you, you played this game, when you look at the Niners with Purdy, it, would you be shocked if they could represent the NFC in the Super Bowl? Like, where are you putting a cap on them? No, I'm not going to cap anything right now, Guru, because what we've seen is we've seen a kid that looks very comfortable. He's got calm feet can make all the throws. You know, when you get to the postseason, they won seven in a row. They won the division. You know, it's about postseason now. Uh, they went, Last year went on the road to Dallas, and they went on the road to Green Bay, and special teams won the Green Bay game. The offense and the defense, you know, were really, really good against Dallas. Had the lead in the fourth quarter against the Rams. Every single step in the postseason, the competition, the pressure is going to get bigger. And the fact is, I mean, Kurt Warner is a really good friend of mine. He always talks about quarterbacks. Do they have, you know, big game genes? The bigger the games, can they step up and make the throws that you got to make to win those games? We don't know that yet. 
And so you're still going to probably roller coaster with your idea. And I can't really say that he can or cannot do it. Um, I could probably come out there and say it, and then they could get smacked by the Philadelphia Eagles and he could fall apart. I don't know. But, you know, the fact is, is they're going to get there. He's going to get, you know, a few more weeks of playing right now. He's going to get three more games. Uh, you know, they might get a first-round bye. That's still a potential. And so you might get a whole month before he plays a game. You know, a really big playoff game, sudden death game. And we'll find out an awful lot about him when that happens. Brian Baldinger joining us on 95-7 The Game. Uh, Baldy, you and I are about the same age. And I forget about all-time great. All right? I'm not talking about a guy who's, who's an all-time great. But I think about the greatest defensive football players that I ever saw. And I, I would say Lawrence Taylor. Mm-hmm. I would put Reggie White in there. Just guys yep. that like stuck yep. out to me. And then mm-hmm. maybe maybe uh, Ray Lewis. I, yep. He's not there yet because he's so young. But am I crazy to think when I'm looking at Bosa that he's at least this year having the kind of year that those guys had over the course of their careers? No, you're, you're not crazy at all, Stein. That's exactly what he is. Uh, you know, he plays the game so hard. He plays it the right way. Um, you know, I was unfortunate last night that they took a sack away from him on a pick six. I mean, it's just a, it's just a bad call. Period. He knows that, but you know, he doesn't. You know, he doesn't. It doesn't shake him up. But he's leading the league in sacks. He might win the sack title this year. But he's the force. He's the force up front that this defense is built around. Just the way I played with Reggie White, played against Reggie. He was that force. LT was that force. Ronnie Lott was that force. Ray Lewis was that force. I mean, the guys you're mentioning. It is young. He's got to do it. He's got to do it in the postseason. You got to win a championship. All those things uh, you have to do. But um, he's on that arc right now. He's on that path to be, one day, you know, maybe be talked about in the same conversation that we're having right now. Baldy, when it comes to uh, coach of the year, I thought it was Sirianni in Philadelphia, and I know what he's doing, and I recognize it. But he has, you know, he hasn't had to go through the turbulence that Kyle has. Has he? I mean, is he? You know, coach of the year consideration in your opinion? Yes. Yeah. Anytime you lose your starting quarterback in Trey, you plug in your second quarterback that you basically had out the door and didn't have any off season or training camp, and now you're down to Mister Irrelevant quarterback in your team. I mean, when you go that you go that far down the depth chart at that position, you have to take all that in consideration. I mean, Jalen Hurts is the league MVP in my mind right now in Philadelphia. He's basically, I mean, Gardner Minshew was taking a couple snaps. He's basically been there every single week. I mean, if you had to go to Gardner Minshew, would the Eagles be 12-1? and one? Would they be just steamrolling teams right now? I don't know. I, I, I kind of doubt it. Uh, but, yes, you have to consider where they're at on the depth chart with the quarterbacks they're playing and what adjustments you might have to make as a head coach when you get to that spot. And so I think right now they're on a seven-game win streak. They look like a real force. I don't know that they're going to lose another game. Uh, but mm. they might get to the postseason, and you go, you have to consider Kyle Shanahan at this point. Uh, Baldy, my sources are telling me that ever since you saw the Warriors play in person, <laughs> they haven't won a game. Uh-oh! <laughs> <laughs> so you saw the Boston yeah, well, game? I, yeah, I was at the Boston game. Um, you know, I know they played uh, They played the 76ers tonight. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think Steph is playing. Um yeah, I mean, they, they, they did take care of business against um, the Celts. The, well, the Celtics, but I, I thought they also took care of business. Did, did they take the Lakers on, too? And the Clippers, didn't they beat those teams? Yeah, that, that, that was uh, before the Boston game, but they beat both of oh, them at Chase. Oh, before the Boston, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, well, what did you I, make I, a Curry I, I, I in person, I don't want to be the though. jinx, though, for what, sure. Yeah, what did you make a Curry in person? Well, I've known Steph a long time. I've seen him play a lot. Uh, in a lot of big games. I mean, he never disappoints. I I like to get to the game an hour and a half early. There you go. Only to watch only to watch Steph and Clay <laughs> warm up. Just just the warm ups. Because I, I started going through a ticker in my head how many shots he hit in a row. Like there was like <laughs> a point where it was like forty something in a row. And I don't even know like and then I saw him just like literally you don't think of him as a jumper. Right. I saw him like an Ollie loop just flush a ball. And I'm like, I knew he you know I I knew he could jump, but I didn't think he could jump like that. 
Hey, Baldy, one thing I've always this found out about former oh. athletes and people of a certain stature is they know more people than you think they know. <laughs> now, how have, you, how have you known Steph Curry for a long time? Well, his, uh, his college coach is Bob McKillop. Sure. And Bob is married to Mary Cunningham, <laughs> who's the older sister of my best friend. <laughs> so, right. you know, Bob McKillop was coaching Holy Trinity High School, you know, Long Island, whatever. We all play summer league, Chris Mullen, we all played out there. You know, and so you see Mark Jackson, you see these guys from the, you know, from the neighborhood, Bob McKillop, they all went through his gym, Long Island Lutheran, before he went to wow. Davidson. <laughs> so, you know, there was always this connection. And Davidson is, you know, it's in Charlotte, and I went to Duke, and, so you're down there seeing Davidson play Duke, and there's Steph out there. There's his dad, Dell, in the stands. You know, you just kind of, you know, build this relationship because I'm a basketball junkie. That's <laughs> so cool, it. man. man. Oh, yeah. Baldy, thanks for yeah. sharing that, my man. Happy yeah. holidays, man. Happy holidays, guys. Right, great to be with you, man. <laughs>